Good morning. Morning. Hello. Saturday morning, you've joined us for another episode of The Weekender, uh, where we go through the highlights and what's happened over the week and just generally conflab about gaming in general. So to uh, enjoy your morning, we hope you're up bright and early. Grab yourself a cuppa. You can pause this. We'll wait for you. And then you can rejoin us. Anyway, I'm joined, of course, by Stu, maestro of the Tabletop Nation and Events Extraordinaire. Morning. Uh, Justin, with a head like a f***ing orange. Hey, um, I'm going to have to beat that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> All of it. And, it always makes me do more work. <laughs> and, of course, we're joined by James M. Hewitt. The M is silent. A co-developer of Dreadball. So one of the, one of the minds behind... This awesome game of Dreadball, which we will be playing later today. Ooh. I believe we're going to take a little bit of a break on a Saturday and enjoy some Dreadball. Um, he's not James Hewitt, who's Prince Harry's dad. No, contrary allegedly. to popular rumours. Allegedly, rumors. that's a, that's uh, a, that's wait, a different what? James Yeah, Hewitt. the Beastable Lawyers are... Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, sorry, allegedly. Ixnay on the hop. So, anyway, um, that's who we all are. We're, we're going to get a bit of a, a chat about Dreadball, because we have some interesting stuff coming up. But... Uh, Kicking off, let's just get stuck in. So some of the interesting stuff that happened this week. Mm. Well, this week was the first week where we were able to roll out the kind of, well, new format, Battlefield Autopsy. Yep. Not much of a new format, but it's in a new location with some new faces and stuff like that. Um, I can just bring that up. So um, how Where did the it go? My God, I'm wearing the same shirt. <laughs> you are wearing the same shirt. This is a, <coughs> recorded on the same day. <laughs> no, no, clearly no, recorded. No. Clearly actually, we recorded this this morning and then sent it back in time to last Friday. That's that's, that's the new technology on no, Facebook. You see, the easiest way they can track it is just look at my face. The beard's longer, so they know it's not the same day. You're safe. Um, this is my little chronometer. I have here. <laughs> <laughs> Am I? So how did it go? You played Gav. Gav, yeah, a uh, good friend of mine, uh, played Gav many times before. Um, Gav is one of those players where uh, he's a really generous, decent person to play against. Uh, hi, Gav, by the way, good morning. Um, but the thing is with Gav, once he's cracked his army, once he's gotten it, uh, gotten it how he wants to play it, he's a fiend. He's an absolute monster on the table. And uh, he's decent about it, so he smashes you to bits as he smiles. But uh, yeah, yeah, he and he's got the Empire of the Blazing Sun for Dystopia Wars down um, down pretty tight now. And my poor French, poor poor French, didn't really stand a chance, sadly, uh, particularly with me commanding them. But yeah. um, well, it's a disadvantage. There were, there were one or two little beautiful moments in that game, if I remember quite correctly. Your your Commodore quite bravely jumped ship. Well, he had to because the ship had just been captured by the. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was that or end up in chains. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. to be fair, <laughs> his choice is going. Choice really. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, Battlefield Autopsy is taking its place on a Monday. You will start to notice, guys, that we're starting to move content to key days. So these shows, we are giving them space to breathe. So they're not going to have a lot of heavy production intros and things like that for a while until we let these shows discover their feet. Um, so feedback is very welcome on this stuff, guys. So by all means, now is the time to start feeding back into us as we warp and shape these things because... Um, as they start to settle down, then they will start to get all their production values and stuff like that applied to them. Mm -hmm. Or they'll die and we'll replace it with something else. And we haven't wasted the resources in creating <coughs> an opening sequence for them. Exactly. I like you thinking. Because resource is now being focused on content that you will enjoy. Ooh. And then with each of them having a key day in the week, you'll know you're coming to the site on that day and you're getting the piece of content you want. Except for the surprises that we put out on the days that you weren't expecting it. This is, this ah, is, yes. this is really off-putting though. Can I just share with you that I'm, I'm almost mirroring um, on the picture. Can we change that? <laughs> that's starting to, yeah, look, I'm just trying just yeah. to line yeah, myself yeah. up there. Like, okay. Yeah. Okay. So hang on, we're More trying serious. to do a screen within a screen here. It, it's going to start to get a bit, a bit troubling, yeah. Well, the, the way my dad, uh, my dad, the way me and Daryl did with uh, Matt Ward and Adam Troke. So yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah, we'll have to get that picture flashed up on yeah, screen. No, 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 do I, it, I Justin. There it yeah, is. But I do remember you arguing with Daryl for a good hour before he would let you paint on his face. Yes, yes. You see, like all I wanted to do was use Chaos Black yeah. to make him look more like I Adam Troke. I have Truk. no idea why he would be upset or, or hesitant at you trying to do that. Well, he went through with, through with it. He's a good sport. Mm -hmm. He does do the most um, uh, amazing things. Picture. Amazing things. Yes, silver armor picture. Yeah. So um, he has done the most amazing things. Mm. Um, 
And do you know what? I used my golden demon skills to, you know, to paint him up. Fantastic. And speaking of golden demon... If only we had a way of getting that good. If only people <coughs> yes. had a way to be guaranteed a Slayer Sword. Each. Each. Yeah. S simultaneously. 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 Is, is such a thing possible? I think such a thing has finally become possible. Um, we have um, this... By Pigbutt Miniatures. We'll bring it up. Justin's probably showing you clips of it as we speak. Uh, yes, I'm showing you some of the masterful techniques used by this. Unbelievable creator. techniques. It's like he's gone back in time to, to some of the best techniques I've perfected when I was first getting into the hobby. Yes. Um, obviously, I've degraded since then. Well, he's, yes. not, he's not stuck any Lego on it. And I often found that with my early Space Marines, yeah, yeah. sticking like, <clears throat> bits of like Lego guns on either side of a Terminator... Mm -hmm. Just made it really pop. Just made it look yeah. so much yes. better. Yeah. Uh, an, an interesting technique that I found, um, I haven't done it in a while, but then again, I've been letting my skills slip, is if you stick uh, multiple backpacks onto a Space Marine, it just looks yeah. awesome. Yeah. Well, it's more power, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. it's a lot yeah. more yeah. power. Even more. He does yeah. cover one of my favourite techniques, the, the gentle three-inch brush. <clears throat> yes. 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 <laughs> You did do that though. You know that? <laughs> no, no. I remember one of my first ones was the uh, the lemon rust that I gave to you. That spent six months in debt. All he gave me a lemon rust, thinking, oh, it was a nice. He was trying to be nice, right? I was trying to be nice. And um, you know, you know, I, I and 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 I, you know, I freely admit sometimes I'm vocal with Justin. You know, me and Justin have our moments. I don't know, you know. but it's, it's always a good laugh. It's always yeah, a good it's always fun. a good laugh, you know, and you know, people are welcome to jump to your defense. You know, if anybody yeah. really cared about you, they would come in here and they would rescue you from, from this hell. That sounds like bullying. It, oh, it does. Dear, oh, dear. It does. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. It does. That, it, however, cut, cut. however, yep. however um, I did think about this and I thought to myself, you know, if you were being bullied, you'd need to speak to somebody. Yep. So I thought I would give you 10p and you could go and phone your friend. But then I rethought that. I thought, no, I'll just phone you uh, instead and save the Tempe. <laughs> <coughs> no, that's the thing some people just don't get. It always has a good laugh, guys. It's never taken in a bad way from me, so never worry about it. Until it is. <laughs> well, there was that one night, that one night where you really got to me. Oh, but, yes. Steve, should but we, you did give me a rather it? nice little letter afterwards. Yes. With <laughs> the first letter of each line spelling something absolutely horrendous. <laughs> and we all had a good laugh and all was forgiven and forgotten. Well, letters of apology need to mean something. Yes, <laughs> so, yes. Anyway, so <clears throat> if you haven't seen this video yet, you mm. have to watch this. You are guaranteed a golden demon by the end of it. Yeah. Um, fair play to Big pig Butt Miniatures. I loved it. Did you just mm. call them Big Butt Miniatures? <laughs> I may have, but that's probably just a Freudian <laughs> slip. <laughs> yes, you have a lot of those. You like Big Butts? When you cannot lie. I like big butts. I cannot lie. I really, I'm really not going don't there. know why. I'm not, I'm not going into it. <laughs> so, um, yeah. uh, pig butt, <laughs> if you're watching this, get in contact, mate. Get in contact, because we really, yeah, really enjoyed fun. that. Mm -hmm. So, um, next up, we had Cheese Hunters as well went out this week. Yes. So, <sighs> Cheese Hunters, how can I describe this, right? <laughs> um, obviously, when we, we're starting to move shows to particular days... Mm -hmm. Okay, we want to do um, just focus more on those shows. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we were doing you know daily tips or, or game tips, and we were doing enlisted and stuff. And the thing that always kind of came out of it is you're always kind of looking for the cheese in there, any, anyway. So you, you maybe <laughs> <laughs> he's not cheesy at all. He hates it. <laughs> he absolutely hates it. So it thought it's probably best to start exploring a show. Tentatively called Cheese Hunters. We'll see if it's, that name sticks or if it changes. But the idea is that we can go into spend a bit longer on it, go into more detail on it, and um, we're just going to explore it. And we have uh, the first Cheese Hunter that stepped up. We're waiting on Daryl coming across now, but the first Cheese Hunter that stepped up was Swampy. First video, you know, I think he did an amazing job. I was, I was, I was amazed. Um, I've known Swampy for many, many years. Um, Almost always in a professional capacity, I hasten to add. But uh, <laughs> now he's a, he, he's a, he's he's one of these guys. He's heart of gold. Um, but just something when he gets onto a gaming table, there's just something in his head that just twists, and <coughs> oh, it's filth. Some of the stuff, it's filth. And I, I I do a lot of events, and the 
are usually on the event. So it'd be something that's intended to be kind of very flavorful or rich in the background. Swampy will go down and go, ah, oh, but that enables me to do this. And he'll just <laughs> roll out this disgusting list with it. So yeah, he's, uh, he's good fun though, he's good fun. Yeah, well we covered a tip for the Black Templars, which I thought was interesting. You know, if you were a heavy Black Templar player, you already knew it, let's, let's be honest here. But, you know, black, not many people are playing Black Templars at the moment, are they? So I thought it was a very, very interesting one. Mm. And it was, it was a nice combination of old book, new FAQs, mm. and 6th edition rules. Mm. And it just, the, the way it stacked, it was it was rather nice actually. I like. I've that. not seen it, but I can kind of feel it in my soul. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, well, if you can imagine uh, three tech marines with squads, inland raiders, pelting across, and then those tech marines get eight attacks on the charge. Yeah, that actually is hurting my brain a little bit <laughs> in the back there. <laughs> That's basically it. So well yeah. worth a well worth a watch again. Open to suggestions on that one, guys. So any ideas and whatnot you have, we will be taking a look at lists in it, I'm sure. We'll be taking a look at individual tactics that you can apply with mm. cheese and certainly big dollops of cheese and game-breaking all sorts of goodness. I will just say, because it is niggling me, he's basically taken advantage of the fact that the Black Templars book was written for like 3rd edition 40k or... <coughs> right at the end of third edition beginning of fourth edition 40k and other than a couple of faqs from gw hasn't really been touched since no mm. it's just horrible abuse <laughs> it's one of those books i think everyone hoped would go in a corner and just die somewhere but, well, but know, it they, perseveres they, they, they need perseveres. a new one they do need a they new do. one or mm. folding into the, here you go this will get the forums going folding into the space marine codex <sighs> would be quite oh, good yeah well, controversial uh, I think we just got about uh, a couple of giga hit mail there yeah that's <laughs> it so, right. that's, you know and that could be the way it goes that that um, mm. back of the 40k rule book black templars are in there with the other so like salamanders black templars um, if you I look don't at, know they've they've kept the dark angels separate they have but the dark angels are separate in the 40k in the 40k mm. rule book and also to support my my theory mm -hmm. if you look at that probably not real but might be real list of uh, Releases, future products yeah uh, there's a unit there which makes it's um the uh, sword brethren which i'm assuming is going to be plastic sword brethren and some kind of flame bringers or something like that which i suspect will be a salamanders, salamanders. and black templar box mm -hmm. and all the more reason why they'd be in the same codex together there you go that's my uh, that's my prediction for 2014 you with your reading between lines and things well you know but it has to be done it has to be <laughs> yeah, done. absolutely yeah. um other than that we had on the table uh went out on thursday as well so thursday night is the home of cheese hunters thursday night is obviously the home of on the table and we've given away a mega mega prize on that one unbelievable prize <clears throat> awesome. so um by commenting on the video on youtube so basically on geek and sundry mm -hmm. you're in with a shot of winning a Merck's rule book and all eight Merck starter armies. So for you and eight of your, or you and seven of your buddies to get into Merck's. We're also, as we've mentioned in the last weekender, as I have mentioned in the, on, on the table, table and I will mention again, we have some plans for Merck's. So if you belong to a club or it's just you and a bunch of mates that play around at one of their houses, you know, we consider that to, to be a gaming group. <clears throat> Get in touch if you're interested in either getting to know Mercs or you're already playing Mercs. And it doesn't matter where you are in the world, get in touch with us because we have something coming up that we really would like some worldwide participation in. Mm. Yep. That's going to be cool. I'm looking forward to that. Last night, we, no, Thursday night, we did a live hangout with, um, there was myself. Sam and Ben, the, the, the heroically write a lot of the stuff that goes into on the table and are manning the site every day with news and articles and stuff. And uh, Bo, one of the producers of Tabletop. So we all got together in a Google Hangout, a uh, live Google Hangout that streams via YouTube. So if you're ever wanting to go <coughs> to, uh, watch one of these things, all you have to do is go to the Geek and Sundry channel. We'll be doing some Beasts of War ones and all you have to do is go to the Beasts of War channel and you'll be able to watch them. We'll probably also be able to stream them onto the Beast of War site. But the Hangout topic was, do you know the way Tabletop is, um, is really capturing a lot of the attention of kind of newcomers to the hobby mm. yeah. um, and people who are avid board gamers but who are now starting to open their eyes to wargaming and you know some of the more hardcore stuff. It was, the topic was focused on uh, gateways 
into the likes of tabletop gaming such as war gaming. So good board games that can get you on the road to good war games. Oh, but James and I actually talked about <coughs> something like this earlier. Yeah. Um, we talked about uh, Castle Ravenloft, the, um, the board game. Mm. James, we polarised a little bit, did. now, didn't we? James, you weren't qu you weren't quite so much of a fan. No, no. Um, I felt that it was it was a good sort of gateway into D and D. Mm. Uh, but for me, I mean, I I, I bought it uh, as a fairly hardcore board gamer. I wanted to get that kind of Warhammer questy dungeon delving, getting cool things, leveling up, killing monsters, buying more stuff that's cool. That was what I was after. A mage Knight kind of. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, wrong game entirely. That's yeah. uh, that's what I did there. Yeah, <laughs> Could, couldn't be for. Whereas no. for, for me, I quite I quite liked it for it being in itself. It was a great. It's a great introduction to uh, D and D. I like the fact that all of the other games you've got, um, Wrath of Shardalon, I think is another one, and, uh, and yeah. some of the other ones. Um, the the way that you can take the characters from those and they can they can be imported into the other games, which kind of mixes up the player group a little bit more. I like the. I think the, the minis in there are quite quite yeah, cool, yeah. quite interesting. They're my favourite part. And I like the the old tiles turning around, kind of a little bit uh, reminded me of the old uh, Advanced Hero Quest, that kind of thing, yeah. mm. or um, uh, Warhammer Quest. Yeah. So for me, it ticked a lot of boxes. And I think it was just quite a nice for somebody that maybe isn't as hardcore as you, James. Um, I think it was quite nice that for like a casual gamer, even yeah. somebody that just does board games like some like I don't know. I hate, hate to say it, but like Monopoly or just your more conventional, traditional board games, it was a really nice way to kind of, it's not really a role play game, it's not really a, a war game or a, a tabletop game in that description, but it's kind of, it, it borrows elements from them and I think it's better for it. And I think that's what this, I mean, the Hangout was really, because I, I, I caught it, I was um, I was busy at the time, but I caught it later because you can totally watch it on catch up. Yeah, yeah, it's sitting there it's, recorded, yeah, so absolutely. it'll be on the Beast of War site if you have a look at where we announced the Hangout, it should yeah. be embedded in there, so. Yeah, um, and I thought it was really cool the way it was getting a lot of people that had kind of got into gaming maybe through tabletop, it was kind of attracting that kind of crowd, mm. and saying, you know what, you have made an amazing first step, now here's where you can spread your wings and come join the rest of us Fantastic. lovely geeky people. Yeah, so some of the key things that cropped up were obviously some people that were worried about the expense mm. of it all, and you know, there's loads you can do about that, and there's not a lot you can do about that. There's loads you can do about that if you're willing to um, move to other games or try other mm. systems and stuff like that. If you're willing to be flexible, there's tons you can do on the expense side. If you're not willing to be flexible and you just 40K is your thing, that is it, and you want to be a tournament player and do all of that, well then unfortunately not an awful lot you can do about that other than eBay, really. Yeah, so. or, or Relic, because you've got Relic coming out from Fantasy Flight. Yeah, when is that coming out? Uh, sometime <coughs> early this year, I believe, and that's that's your um, your talisman, but yeah, the Warhammer Forty Thousand version of it. Mm. So, so you play a group so of I think give I think. it time. Give but it time I just mean if you if you're Flight determined to have it. big forty k armies, yeah, sure. then okay. then you don't yeah. have a lot of options. But the, the you know for me it's about it's about having flexibility. You know, it's you don't want to be. Um, Mike of Infinity fame on Beast of War came out with this great thing where he said, look, do you want to eat pasta yeah. all the time? Of course you don't. You want to try pizzas and stews and fish and chips. <laughs> so, um, you know, it's about having the flexibility to look around other games. Yeah. It, it, and looking at the skirmish games is a good option. So any of you 40K players or Warhammer players um, or any other system, if you're just a single system guy, you know, take a look at some of the skirmish games mm. as, a, as a second system just yeah. to give you uh, a different outlook on your gaming. <coughs> Infinity would be a good one. Infinity yeah. is a good one. Mercs yeah. is another good one. Malachi, 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 Malachi is good. Very War good because they hordes. both have the, the two-player battle boxes. Carnival is a personal yeah. favourite of mine. Uh, very nice little game. Dust. Dust, for sure. Dust, for me, is going to be has the potential to be a great gateway game because you can pick up the box set of Dust Tactics mm -hmm. and then play that to death. And when, you're uh, and when you've enjoyed yeah. it enough, go pick up Warfare. the Dust Warfare yeah. rule book, pick up some more minis, and then bang, you're starting to play on the tabletop. It is, it is mm -hmm. quite cool. Although I must admit, I've just started uh, started to look at the Merc stuff in detail and really impressed. I like the... Uh, you should remember, do you remember the computer game from years ago, the old Syndicate? Syndicate. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah. It's really... Uh, this. I haven't quite found the model, which is the trench coat with the Gatling gun yet, but, uh, or the mini There'll gun. Be one. But, uh, there's, there's one planned for the uh, Malifaux roleplay game, which is called Anyone. Oh, yes, uh, this came up the last time because yes. they made the, the male version Into the, and the female version. Yeah, yeah, they've got, they've got a female plastic tool. They have so with, yeah. yeah, trench coat and yeah, yeah, yeah. large um, machine gun. But, um, yeah, and again, I think I think it's 
the day of miniguns being just carried around by it used to be for terminators and land speeders yeah. and things now i think the days of the small person with the gigantic rotary cannon I think the serious back in. problem yeah, yeah yeah and i think mercs is probably going to be the first one because some of those russian guys do look like they're quite heavily on steroids those uh, <laughs> oh, the yeah. tiny tiny head and huge bodies yeah um, the, the behemoth with the gigantic hammer that's bigger than his torso there's yeah. a really sad backstory in there somewhere <laughs> oh yeah tragic tragic childhood story yeah. i'm sure <laughs> used to used to self-harm in a stairwell or something but oh, yeah but yeah it's I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, but it's. Um, I was talking about the guy. Uh, but, <laughs> what? Uh, <laughs> no. But yeah. So see, the bullying continues. Um, no, I think. But Merck's been really, really impressed with it, um, and I, I like the fact that I can't pronounce half of the team name or the, yeah. the, the, the company <laughs> names. Well. Is it Sifadu? Sifadu? Sifadu. Awesome. I mean, they look great. Yeah. Uh, I, I love the style of the helmet. They're the kind of the African. In they the are. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. For me, it has to be the the Kamvar. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, okay, yeah. Simply, Very I cool. like the the sort of sneaky, sneaky type of gameplay. Mm-hmm. But um, the other one that we haven't spoke about, which I think is an amazing gateway into war gaming, mm. is X Wing. Yeah, X Wing. Um, X Wing is on fire at the moment. Absolutely on fire. Usually at the hands of the Empire. If the X Wing's on fire. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, fair enough. Yeah. But um. It's a good one because you know, war gaming doesn't always have to be little men. Mm-hmm. You know, we have there's obviously dystopian wars, Firestorm Armada, yep. loads of games of of that ilk. But X Wing, you know, you're buying the stuff; it's already painted. Yeah. It looks great, yep. and you know what it is. You're not you're not going to concern yourself too much with the with n- not understanding a backstory because you already know it, and it doesn't cover them silly prequels either. <laughs> I think you know. I think it, it breaks down a lot of a lot of barriers that people often have to getting into wargaming. They look at the yeah. thing of I've got to build models and paint models and learn a whole system universe. of things. Whereas actually, yeah, you have to drop yourself into the universe's fluff as well. Yeah, when you can say, well, we've all seen Star Wars. Anyone who hasn't seen Star Wars, Dead. no, no one hasn't seen Star Wars. Be- beatings, <laughs> savage beatings. I yeah. think at the very least. Yeah. So those people are punished by not being able to play X-wing. You know, on the yeah. same level. But uh, to every every other normal person, there is there's an amazing gateway, as you say, to get into the you know once you got the hang of that, you can then say I want to now build build an army of something. I want to surely there's there's a, a gap now for a, a Star a Star Wars proper no, hardcore game. Game. Come on, you know somebody's got to do it. I, I'm sure I'm sure negotiations are going on at this <laughs> moment in the background. I can think of at least two companies who could be potentially trying to pitch for that. Yeah. Mm. So, and I can think of one very large company who wouldn't. But, but <laughs> probably should. But probably should, but wouldn't. <laughs> so, um, yes, it was a very interesting hangout. Well worth it. If uh, well worth a watch, guys. If you're sitting painting or whatever, and you wanna you wanna listen mm. to it, um, or if you just wanna kill some time, it, it it was good fun. I enjoyed it a lot. So, um, for next week, some of the things you've got to look forward to is we have a new format of What's in the Box that we're experimenting with. It'll be well worth a watch, and you can win some goodies by watching Ooh. What's in the Box. So, our plan is that What's in the Box, um, you, can, you can win some stuff. Yeah, so it's, um, we, it'll, it's scheduled for Wednesdays? Yep, it'll be going out Wednesday, <coughs> roughly 6 p.m. in the evening, because we're going to try and get the shows going in the evening, so just after you're in from work, Mm-hmm. You've had your dinner, you're sitting down, time to relax and watch a little war gaming. Yeah, and so, what if you live in Australia? Well, I'm talking locally. <laughs> <laughs> then it's ready for you when you're up in the morning. Yes. First thing uh, in the morning, you've got a quality this show. Is, this is the difficulty we have, because we've just said good morning to all you guys, but you know, um, half the people that watch this, it'll, it's probably afternoon or evening. Yeah. So. Yes, yeah, so if you're in Texas or anywhere like that, pause it. Yeah, wait yeah. in the morning. Go, go to Let bed, it buffer yeah. for a while, yeah. yeah. It's always better in the morning with a big cup of splosh or a mm-hmm. coffee or whatever you want to have. And yeah, good fun. Cup of Joe. Cup of Joe. Joe. Cup of Joe. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we, uh, on top of that, we have a couple, of, uh, we have a couple more um, shows that we're introducing. However, I'm not going to talk about that because I want to actually get them in the can. And yes, there's some there's some new backstage stuff that we're working on just at the moment as well. So we're getting there. You know, I'm enjoying the move to... Um, content on particular days i'm enjoying the weekender and yes for those guys that are wondering turn eight has not been ditched nor has live rounds however we have we've we've still some steps to go before we can get there both the equipment technology it everything else so it's all finally falling into place well live rounds would be good because uh 
Oh, if, if, if only one of us at the table had a gigantic venue that we could use for live rounds, that would, <laughs> uh, that would, that would be handy, wouldn't it? Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Right, so release watch, Ooh. okay? Um, obviously, the big release. Today, it's out. You can get your hands on it. You can go to the local store. You can go online. You can get it. it is Dark Angels. Mm. Yeah. So, um, no doubt you're going to be wondering about a Dark Angels week. Yeah, we're, we're looking at that too. However, um, it's not likely to be next week, although we probably will throw in a couple of bits and pieces of Dark Angel stuff during that week, but the week after. But if you want the ultimate, the ultimate look into all things Dark Angels, I highly suggest you, you tune in. On the subject of Dark Angels, briefly, um, and because I may well be getting excited about them later on, and I want to, I want to explain, otherwise I seem to have like an opinion changing up the wind, I've almost turned around on the Dark Talon. I wasn't so mm. keen on it. It looked like the Storm Raven, uh, sorry, the Storm Talon with a couple of wings stuck on the side. And yes. Essentially, it is. Mm -hmm. um, but now I've actually, now we've had him in and I've had a, I've had a good look at it and, uh, and had a bit of a play with him shooting it. Anybody else make aeroplane noises as they I don't think you biologically flies? can't. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, okay, that's cool. It's not just me. <laughs> <laughs> so now I've had a bit of a play with it. Uh, it is growing on me. I still yeah. think the land speed of vengeance is a bit mm. poor, but the uh, but the the, this, the um, dark talon is becoming quite sexy in my yes, mind. Well, it we do have one cool. little caveat that we need to make clear to everyone for the storm talon: there are not candles on it. Oh we yeah, we're wrong yeah. about that. Sorry, guys. Yeah, the uh, the new dark. In fact, none of the no, new dark was, angel that vehicles. That was the land. Or that was the land vengeance. speeder. Yeah, it doesn't have candles. What on. do you mean it doesn't have candles? I look at it. They look like candles. <laughs> but obviously, somebody has looked at the CAD. I still wager that they were sculpted with candles originally. Somebody's looked at the computer-aided design and gone, yeah, candles are a really stupid idea. And they've, and they've turned them into little points of metal that look like candles from a distance, but they're not actually candles. Yeah. So as a point of correction, <laughs> somebody actually on the, uh, on the Beast of War, on the feedback actually did point out, what are they talking about candles for? There's no candles on it. You're quite right. There are no candles on it. There'll be candles on mine. <laughs> so sorry, you can deride them the, yourself. If him going to the body shop, getting the big fat one. <laughs> <laughs> no, it looks good. There we go. Because a big fat one always. Oh, looks good. Warren, no. Last week, actually, in the, in the weekender, I was ill. Yes, and to prove <clears throat> that you were ill, I, I hadn't fully recovered, and the the evidence in this is in this clip here. Yep, I like being short, Ooh. angry, and having big cannons behind me. Now, what was that you just said, Justin? Well, what we were talking about was... I don't care what we're talking about. What did you say? In context, if you don't mind. No, no, forget the context. Okay, my about. exact line was, I like an army where I have big can cannons behind me. Oh, yes, he does. Oh, yes, he does. And I have been kicking myself all week. You missed it. I yeah. missed it. Yeah. You know, what, what is going on that I, uh, that I missed that? I truly was not myself. But through the power of technology, you, you can but go back in time. Power no, of technology, no, just as they can, can go back home, they, yeah. they can go back in the whole that. catalog and go, "Yeah, that was rubbish." <laughs> <laughs> so um, yes, anyway, you were you were saying about how you love a big fat one. No, no, no. I said you were going to go get a big fat one. Oh, right. Oh, okay. See, thankfully this is recorded, so you can go back, <laughs> check what I said, tell me if I'm right or I'm wrong, or if I keep saying things and my mind just has, I don't know, selective hearing or something. Yes, well, it could be. However, um, having seen the Guaranteed Golden Demon video, yes. what I was thinking of doing actually was getting a candle, um, a, a green one, mm -hmm. and dripping it over it uh, as, a, yeah. as a means of, you know, of giving it... Extra, a more monastic quality. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Do you want to let Spain Mon know? Monastic. Do you want to let Spain know? Because obviously, that is going to win Golden Demons. They, yes. they, need, bother, Spain they need to bother coming over. No, it's yeah, you, it's you a done deal. The flights yeah. and all the hassle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. I should. I really shouldn't have given that tip away. Actually, yeah. should I? So everyone's going to do it now. So um, yes, we may have been wrong with candles, but we weren't. So yeah. <laughs> so well release conceded. Watch. Other yeah. things that have been that have just come out. Okay, Operation Market Garden. From Battlefront for Flames of War. Oh, oh, oh! This is nice. So what it is is it's a it's a two pack of new books. Okay, so these are uh, Bridge by Bridge and Market Garden. So they replace, uh, for example, a Bridge Too Far. Okay, and they cover the whole Market Garden assault, which was not the largest airborne assault, but 
one of the largest airborne that. assaults. One of Montgomery's harebrained schemes where they wanted to take these bridges um, to, well, apparently, uh, A, get closer to Germany, then they stopped because they couldn't get past Arnhem, um, so it kind of whittled out. Lost a lot of casualties in that. The fighting was yeah. fierce in Wouldn't that. they gain casualties? <clears throat> Did I say they lost casualties? Because if you lose casualties, don't they get better? Yes, they gain <laughs> casualties. Depends if, if you find them later. <laughs> yes. so, um, where all these all these injured people come from? <laughs> where, where, where are they all They're coming? ours. Oh, God. Give these men weapons. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, they, they, they suffered casualties, suffered a lot of casualties, because yeah. the fighting was much, much more fierce than they thought. Mm -hmm. So anyway, they brought this out as a two-pack, this book. Um, I think you can save something like a tenner. Um, by buying it now, because mm. you can't buy the book separately for another month. All right, oh, so they're coming cool. out as a two-pack at the minute. Uh, yep, a two-pack for sure. Cool. <laughs> Never worried. Oh, anyway, what have I done? This time? What <laughs> have I done? Nothing. So it's uh, so well worth a look if you're into your Flames of War. I'm definitely going to uh, go and have a look at it because I just think it's covering uh, Brits, Americans, Canadians, and Germans covered throughout it. So very cool. Um, we have a couple of Bolt Action releases. So Bolt Action have Russians out. Um, that caused a bit of a stir here among the, the, a lot of the folks that worked on here in the gaming center. Um, Russians actually seem very popular. Which yeah. I have no real affinity to the, <coughs> to the Russians. Uh, I know a lot of people love the idea of feeling vast T-34 armies. Um, but it has caused quite a stir. So hopefully we can get a few pictures of those up for you to have a look at. And then finally, um, the Panzer, they're releasing a Panzer IV H with okay. Schürzen. With what? Schürzen. Schürzen. Oh, bless you. Schürzen. 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 armor. Yeah, so what it is, is basically um, armor panels up oh. the side. Yeah, so this was it's the it's variant armor. of the, uh, I'm having a stab at this. This was the, the <laughs> next one up from the Panzer III, or maybe a, maybe a variant of the Panzer IV. And they applied Zimmerit and stuff like that over it. So Zimmerit is that kind of paste that breaks off. Don't uh, yeah. No, no, no. Uh, Zimmerit is an anti-magnetic mine paste. Oh, that's it. That's it. The yes. funny thing is, it was only the Germans that used magnetic mines. Well, well, that doesn't stop an ally from picking one up and chucking it back. Mm. Um, and it's also, it's also, I think, a very smart thing that. Yes, they may have been the only ones to use magnetic mines, but that doesn't necessarily mean that that could have been the way. Well, so the going going with defences against your own level of armour is a sensible thing, I think, anyway. Mm. So it's out, and it's always nice to see some 28mm mm. stuff. These 28mm yeah. tanks from Bolt Action are really mm. something sick. I'm, I'm enjoying that. And then, uh, finally, last release of note is Dreadball Tokens. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Which segues us, us beautifully into having a chat with um, James M. Hewitt, co-developer of Dreadmore. Supporting developer, I think, is what the official... Oh, that's your official, uh, official yep, title. Yeah, but, designation. But, but yeah, basically, you yourself, and, yourself and Jake Thornton were on this. So, yeah. so there Look it at is. Look this. Um, so, how's it been going? Dr Dreadball is on fire at it's, the moment. It's on fire on top of a hill, screaming. That, that's yeah. how good it is. Um, it's yeah, it's been a hell of a ride, um, and finally it's out in the shops. I got my own copy finally yesterday, so I'm really excited. Yeah, um, so you're only getting a copy now. Well, yeah, because it, it, it was so, so popular. Hard to get a hold of. Yeah, yeah, it was so popular that it was literally sold out. I went to the guys at Mantic and said, well, it's, "It's here. Can I finally get my copy?" Because I've been using the, my, my, my playtest copy originally, mm -hmm. which was bashed together out of various bits of whatever I had lying around. You know, um, then I uh, graduated to the, the metal master mold models which we use for a lot of the playtest uh, events um but I, I have yet to actually lay my hands on the actual the deck of cards in the game for example yeah. um i have yet to play on the actual fold out lovely cardboard board mm -hmm. arena it's probably the word i should use um so i'm really excited i'm gonna go and crack it open later and probably play a few games so i wouldn't blame anyone for joining me if you want so to. if you had to pick mm -hmm. um one or two key mechanics yep. in the game mm -hmm. that, that stood out for you as something you were quite proud of or something that you were, and it don't necessarily have to, to be yours, but that, that, yeah, that yeah, you yeah. guys did. What would, what, would, what would jump to your mind? One of my favorite 
elements of the game. And it, it's, a, it's a fairly popular mechanic these days. It's um, the idea of the exploding sixes. Um, mm -hmm. Because they let you, with your little tiniest, weediest goblin jack, if you're very lucky, and you know, very lucky is one of the things that, as we all know as gamers, happens yep. about six out of ten times. Um, you can. Or one out of six times. <laughs> don't come in here with your, your stats and your maths and try breaking things up. Um, well, we I all know. I was that I one slide. Yeah. Like what you're talking about happened to me. I was playing a game down in Tabletop Nation a couple of nights ago, mm -hmm. and uh, my human guard went after a goblin jack. Mm -hmm. This little jack stood to the guard who was charging, so he was rolling full yep. number of dice and knocked him down. Really? Yes, so the weedy little goblin just went, nah, not today. And those are the bits you remember. That's, that's the now, bit when you that... say exploding sixes, what you actually mean is whenever I roll a six, yep. I get to roll it again and add the result to yeah, my yeah, previous yeah. result. So and if I roll get... a six again, I can do it again. You can yes. keep on going, yeah. And, and have an stacking. exponential success rate. Yeah, yeah. precisely. So, and, it, and it means that... Uh, it's linear. It just adds a bit of excitement. It's not exponential. It's linear. Okay, fine. Yeah. God. But I'll tell <laughs> you... Basically, it's slightly more different. Very, very picky. The best bit is it really messes with the heads of the guys you try to number grind and get all the stats out because yeah. that six is always a wild card in there and it, it's funny to watch basically mm -hmm. yeah. uh, although one of the guys on, on the board game geek uh site i think or a site yeah. uh somewhere did a list of stats which is very clever and takes that into account so mm -hmm. whoever he was fair play to him um so that's one mechanic i like the the yeah. sixes rolling up and the other one i think is that, that makes the game so unique as a sport yeah as well as a board game is once the action starts, it doesn't stop. Uh, there is no stopping. There's no resetting. There's no pause half time for a quarter of an orange or techno orange or whatever it is they have in the future. I'm assuming techno fruit like will have come orange, in. Clockwork yeah. orange. <laughs> a clockwork orange, it's indeed. A yeah. A clockwork orange. Well, that's I more of a steampunk uh, yeah. dreadball mm. clone. I'm but, going uh, to have to get that on a t-shirt just just to settle you. You know, just so you can't constantly be saying it. Yes. That won't stop him. No, it won't. No, it's just. Yes, but it, I enjoy the attempt. You know, yeah. It makes the my life slightly less futile. Oh. Anyway, you're interrupting here. We're talking about we're talking about action never stopping here. So. Yeah, it's ironic, really, he's, that yeah. we've kind of been he's derailed here. He's to interrupt. He's a human being. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what the doctors told me. Mm. But no, I love the way the game. You, know, you, you kick off at the start, and it just goes and goes and goes, and it can swing back and forth so yeah. massively. It, I, I've, I've, well, because of the nature of the game, because it is sudden death, effectively, you're always playing down to the last dice roll. Yeah. There is never, there are very, very rarely a situation, you can probably tell me the exact mathematical chance, because that seems to be your thing, um, there is very, very rarely a chance that you will get to like turn, you know, turn 13 out of 14 and go, no, there's no point carrying on, because yeah. I can't win. It's always worth pushing on. Yeah. And that to, that to me is a big thing in, in gaming, mm -hmm. because there's nothing like getting to halfway through a game and thinking, uh oh. Tabled at turn two. Yeah. Yeah, so instead yeah. of being a steamroller game, you have a good punch yeah. up, a bit of a fight about it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think even worse than being tabled is that where you're just limping for four turns of a, a six turn game, for example. Yeah. You know, you're one little unit of something in a game of 40k, sitting in a building going, please don't kill me. <laughs> you know, I'm so young. I, I want to live. I think those kind of games, you, you do tell the difference between different types of opponents because you'll get the very, very competitive yeah. opponent who'll just go, <laughs> they usually wear hats. Swampy was wearing a hat, wasn't he, in that video? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Weird hat, that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, usually wearing a hat, takes a hat off, throws a hat on the table if he if he's defeated on turn two, just walks off. Probably doesn't even shake your hand or talk to you. Oh, okay, whatever. Whereas, I, for me, a decent opponent will, at least, <laughs> even if they are utterly munted by about the second turn, they'll keep playing on until the sixth turn. Even because it's about it's as much about making sure you're having a good time yeah. as... That as, old social as, contract as thing that always uh, yeah, gets thrown around. Whereas that's one of the things, because I've had a couple of goes of Dreadball, and there's two things that struck me. One was, exactly as you say, actually there isn't really a moment where you think, I'm utterly stuffed, yeah. there's no way I can bring this back. There's always a chance, which I really, really liked, so uh, well played, sir. Uh, and the other bit I, I really liked is, I'm a big fan of Blood Bowl, yeah, and I will say Blood Bowl and Dreadball in the same sentence. Yeah. Um, it isn't Blood Bowl. It's no. not 40k Blood Bowl. No. Um, there is a there's similarities. It's a sports game. Um, it uses miniatures. It does use a board, but it plays so very very differently. I think it would have been really naive of us to kind of design it in a vacuum. Yeah. Um, mainly because they're really small and full of dust. Um, so, no, to design it in, in a way without looking at Blood Bowl as a thing that's out there. Whereas actually, I think what we've achieved, I hope, 
um, is made a game that is it, it can live on a shelf next to Blood Bowl. Yeah. So you've got you, two very different games. Yeah, well, from what I've seen of playing this myself, the game just plays as itself. It's yeah. not trying to emulate yeah. Blood Bowl. It has its own feel, its own flavour. Yeah, that was always our, our, our goal from the word go, was make it different. Yeah, well, I, I've played it against Ronnie, actually. <laughs> really? Yes. Um, utterly defeated him, as I tend to do. <laughs> um, and I loved it actually I did yeah. love it. it I'm looking forward to the, the simple fact is it just hasn't been in stock anywhere until it went on stupid sale uh, recently yes there was one site something uh, I had ten of this we're yeah. not going to name yeah. him but we'll not name you know him, who you are yes. yeah, yeah. 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 a site yeah. priced it wrong it can happen by the way yeah, so absolutely. you say but they priced it wrong and then a flood it went viral it did <laughs> So basically, the, the only thing about it is it's it's clearly successful, Dreadfall. Yeah, very much so. Um, because it, it, it's hard to find it anywhere. I've no been told, this is from my, my secret insider sources, that it should be back in stock at the back end of January. Ah. This is what I've been told. This could oh. be true. Yes, well, yeah. the toss-up for me in it is, do I grab the dwarves or do I grab the female team? Well, the female team aren't out yet, so you grab your dwarves now. Ah, okay, and then, and then grab the females then. Well, yeah. Okay. Stop it. So, so <laughs> you actually set these up, aren't you? Yes, yeah. <laughs> that you, cannot possibly be by accident. No, no, I, I have the uncanny ability to walk into these saying something completely innocent. Grenade! His mind just <laughs> just, <laughs> Tell you what. His mind will just be sitting there, crouched, waiting. And then it's just, aha! Why don't you whisper things to me first and I'll give you a nod or yeah. a shake of the head? Uh, no, 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 I'm not doing that because then that might look strange in and of itself and he would just go, aha, here we go again. Whispering sweet nothings. But you know, it's probably better that than to be um, a female dwarf grabber. So. <laughs> so. And uh, there Jake goes, okay, new rule set. <laughs> anyway, we have a Dreadball event. We do indeed. Uh, we do indeed. Uh, in fact, I think we have a couple to talk about, have we not? <clears throat> we have one that I'm very, very comfortable talking about, <laughs> and we have one that I'll make make thick allusion to, but yeah. uh, we can't officially we can't talk about a massive national um, national chain of uh, heats no. and uh, and a finale. Uh, no, we can't talk it's about not a thing yet. to talk about. No, 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 no. We're not, so we're not going to we're not going to use the word Super Bowl or, no. or, or anything. Anything like that? We're not yeah. going to talk about it because it's so. Uh, yeah, we're not going to talk about summers of Dreadball or anything. No, like that there, we're not so. going right, okay. uh, to. Nor am I going to record a little a little video with a white background with um, and just 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 spill the beans before it's officially <laughs> announced or anything because we're, we're not like that. I'm glad we're avoiding these things. Yes. Good, yeah, yeah, because that that, yes, yes, yes. that so would be it, embarrassing. It's yes, quite yeah. stealthy about all this, as you can what see. What guys. event can we talk? We about can for? talk about. Um, I'm going to hold it up here, but I'd, I'll imagine that through the power of magic and voodoo. The Beast of War guys are about to, there you go. Yeah, give me <laughs> Throw this up. Give this up. Wee. So um, you've got, uh, we've got the Copper Bowl. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a really nice chap. Uh, his name's Rich Jones. Uh, he's put together a little bit of an event. Uh, what he wants to do, he's looking to raise some money for Help for Heroes, which yeah. I think is a great charity. Mm -hmm. um, and in doing that, he's had a lot of fun playing here at Tabletop Nation. So what he's doing is he's coming up with a little event, um, which he's going to be running on the 27th of January. Uh, it's free to enter, so just come down uh, to get involved. Um, you can also go onto our Facebook site or um, the soon-to-be-unveiled Tabletop Nation hub. Yeah. Um, Ooh, of War, yeah. Uh, and you'll be able to talk mm -hmm. about that there. And what it'll basically be, you'll come down, and uh, if you want to then make a donation to Help for Heroes because you've had a really great time, which you will do, um, that'd be really great. And it's about just enjoying yourself. There's um, there's loads of uh, prize support. Uh, Mantic have been really good about this. They've um, they've really uh, stepped up to the plate to help out. See, sports illusion there. Stepped yeah. up to the plate for mm -hmm. that. Uh, and uh, it's going to be it's going to be a really really good day. Uh, Copper Bowl. I'm uh, I'm getting quite excited about it. It's going to be our first proper dreadball event here yeah. um, since the uh, Kickstarter um, launch yeah. party. Yeah, that's I it. Think yeah. It, yeah. So it's going to be very very cool. Uh, so get your teams down and uh, and get involved. I think one of the key things here is that there there is going to be a lively event scene yeah. for for Dreadball. Definitely, it's definitely kicking off now. Yeah. So there's a lot of talk of support and things. I don't know what I can say and what I can't. So I shall just say that there's a lot of stuff I think in the pipeline for the community. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the the book talks a little bit about tournaments. Yeah. But I almost felt reading through it, and, and James, please correct me if I'm wrong. That it almost felt like that would be the next step in addition to the seasons yeah. and the MVPs and things that maybe in terms of a structure 
there'd be something either somebody in the community or possibly Mantic themselves come up with something more to yeah. kind of support the you've game. got your league system in the, in the book which yeah. I mean you know that is a brilliant starting point but yeah. that's one way of playing a league yeah. and I think we're looking now uh, I don't know if it'll be part of season two or three or a separate thing entirely but different ways of getting a group of people together playing some games having brilliant. some fun mm -hmm. what's wrong with that yeah. not a thing no not a thing uh, Event-wise, anything else coming up that we should know about? <laughs> We've got loads coming up. We'll link. Um, the, in essence, Tabletop Nation has at least one event on every weekend from here on in. Um, there mm. will be something going on. Uh, always check on either our Facebook site or on the Hub, um, and that will let you know not only what the event is, but it'll also talk about things like um, some of the events are going to be free because of their nature. Some of the events, if they've got food or prize support or something, there might need, there might be like a minimum ticket cost. Other events, because they're like these huge weekenders and you know, you're getting entertainment and food and everything else for the entire weekend, there, you know, there's going to be more of a ticket price involved mm -hmm. because obviously it has to be paid for. Um, in, and in, some events... Yeah are even global as well. Well, they that, have kind of global participation. That's so. then that is then the next stage beyond it. We've got um have we have we talked about some of the things that we're looking at for uh, in February we've got something uh, mm. very very special planned which yeah. may or may not have anything to do with the big <laughs> shout out you've been doing uh, 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 merch. <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> um, so there might be something very very cool globally and um, yeah Still trying to get my head around conference calls to America, but there you go. Yeah. Uh, but very, very cool. Uh, but in terms of what we're generating within within the venue and in supporting the some of the UK scene, um, so we have Copper Bowl, as I say, on the 27th. Then moving away from, from Dread Ball, as, as saddening as it is, uh, we've got a really cracking event. Uh, if you've never played it before, I thoroughly recommend you get in on it. Malifo. Uh, we have a really lovely event called um, Lost Love. A day of encounters. So on the seventeenth of February, which for the shrewd ones out there um, is the weekend after the Valentine's Day. So it's the first Saturday after uh -huh. Valentine's Day. Um, oh, sorry, Sunday after Valentine's Day. Uh, it's both really nice chap again called uh, David Brown. Well done, David. Very very nice work you're doing. And what it's effectively going to be, it's an entire day of your uh, of your of your little Malifaux teams battling against each other, doing all sorts of horrible, horrible things with each other, tricking each other, stabbing each other up, and, uh, and all the normal uh, Malifaux madness. Um, again, moving towards um, some fantastic prizes at the end, including, and I'll refer to the document here, uh, the, you've got best painted master, best painted supply wagon marker, which is always good. Nice. But my favourite for the last place is actually wooden spoons. So it's, it, it's got to be a... See, I always look at the last place thing, because if anybody's seen the battlefield autopsies, I don't win very often, uh, so I always always make sure there's good support for the losers. Um, but this is looking a really, really good one. It's going to be ten pounds this one, and uh, it's going to give you the entire day of uh, of Malifaux action. It's been specifically engineered for those just getting into Malifaux. Maybe you've played a couple of games, you're looking to get into a bit more of a. We're trying to not use the word tournament because mm -hmm. that kind of implies that I'm facing a room full of Daryls and Swampies. Uh, that's not really what this is going to be about. It's more about people enjoying the game and kind of enjoying the game for the background and um, a more organized play yeah yeah i like that yeah organized play uh, they malaphone the setting malaphone they talk about encounters so it's a day of encounters but yeah it's effectively a day of organized play so tickets for that are, uh, are on sale so if you want to hop on to uh, our facebook page uh, you should be able to track down where to pick those up so that's that's very good so that's 17th of february and then the last one I'd like to talk about is, we talked about the different types of events. So a narrative campaign weekend. Um, this is for um, the Horus Heresy. So those of you that have picked up Forge World's lovely weighty phone book of, a, uh, of leather awesomeness, um, or have just got an interest in the, in the Horus Heresy background, this is using the Age of the Emperor setting, which is, um, we'll throw some links up yep. Um, yep, on the video. Yeah, I'll have them. Right Marvellous, there. there you go. So if you hop along there, there's a, a whole rule set you can download and it lets you play. As good as the Patrol book is, it was very specific yeah. on the four legions you could use and a very specific time period. Whereas what the Age of the Emperor setting does is it's more of a, a, an open, broader set of rules. It lets you play any of the legions. There'll be custodes, there'll be sisters, of, the, the, the whole shebang. What this event is going to do though, Betrayal, um, on the 16th and 17th of March here, Tickets sell £45. It's a whole weekend you're going to get. That will be dealing with specifically the Forge World book, so actually the scenarios of what was happening 
right at the end of the Great Crusade on Isfahan, okay, with the four legions, Death Guard, World Eaters, Empress Children and Sons of Horus cleansing each other and massacring each other. That's great. But it also, it's a slightly broader scope. You'll be able to play through the scenarios in the Forge World book, but it also deals with well, what were the Space Wolves up mm. to then? What were the Imperial Fists doing? Um, what were the Orcs doing? What were the Dark Eldar doing? So it, it deals with, it's the end of the Great Crusade. So there's some crusading going on out there. And meanwhile on Isvan, there's a terrible, terrible betrayal is underway. So that's what the weekend's going to take care of. Uh, it'll use a lot of the game mechanics from the main 40k rulebook. So it should be very comfortable, very easy for people to get into. But when you have a look on there, download the pack, have a look, because you do need to be aware you can't just pick up your Tau army and trot up. You know, it is, it's as close to a, a proper historical game as you can get in Warhammer 40,000. So that there are a couple of army army selection criteria and things that are going to restrict you in one way but they're going to open up a whole load of other options so it should be a really really good uh, really good weekend there's a strong following for it can i say i'm speaking as someone who has been to one of the narr narrative campaign weekends that you've had quite a bit to do with uh, they are awesome they are legendary they are really really good fun i think we're also going to be uh, maybe doing a bit bits and pieces with the backstagers and stuff yeah, that's right. The yeah. um, the Age of the Emperor and a lot of the narrative weekends we're going to be doing at Tabletop Nation are through a, a narrative event group called the Tempest Fugitives, mm. which some of you have heard of, some of you won't have heard of. Nice bunch of guys. Um, the Swampies won? So, most, mostly a nice <laughs> bunch of guys. <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah, well, like, like any group, you have, you have the extremes, don't yes. you? Um, you? There's that bell curve. <laughs> yeah. Bell curve, you said. Bell curve, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, and, no one's got one. <laughs> yeah, so there, there you go. Uh, so, yeah, there's a whole bunch of guys, but as part of it, um, and where it's different to some of the stuff you might have seen before, what the fugitives tend to do is they'll come up with a, rather than just being a very dry campaign pack or whatever, there'll be loads of new units. Like there's a Tyrannic War weekend in May, and that's going to have, you'll be able to take your normal armies. But it also has a load of new extra units to take on, like Death Watch in 40k. There's a Gene Stealer Coven army list and stuff like that. So we thought it would be a really great opportunity with the, uh, with the backstage guys, with the uh, backstage pass uh, holders. What we can do, part of the development for Age of the Emperor, and probably other things that we're going to do with the Tempest Fugitives as well, is a good opportunity for us to give the backstage guys an exclusive in on some of the stuff we've got in progress you're going to be able to feed directly into that. So if you've got ideas and things and you'd like to see mm. them put into a kind mm. of a larger professional pack, it'll be your opportunity to feed into that. Once the backstages have had it for a week or so and had a bit of a play with it, um, we'll then release that to the wider the wider community to also pitch in their ideas. Yeah. And uh, I think between us all, it's going, to be, it's going to be fantastic. But the backstages are going to get their, uh, going to get their hands on it first. Mm. Interesting. Very exciting. Interesting stuff. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to these weekends actually i'm looking forward to i've never been to a horus heresy weekend i do love the books um i've been totally absorbed in the books i love the the luna wolves and whatnot so uh i'm looking forward to that one it's going to be it's going to be very exciting um and for me um we've done age of the emperor events i mean it's been going on for several years now we've done age of the emperor events in in various places but being at tabletop nation and me having a bit of a say in in how in how the venue runs I've been able to, not only have I been able to focus the content of the weekend to make the most out of the venue, mm -hmm. but also I've been able to focus the venue to make sure that if we're going to run these big events like the Age of the Emperor, we want to make sure that we've got absolutely the best. So, for example, we want lots of screens to show all the various missions and background art and things like that. Let's do that. If we're going to have a, you know, a bar and have, and have it all properly catering for what the uh, gamers are going to want, Let's do that. So not just the Age of the Emperor stuff, but pretty much all the events are going yeah. to be... The environment here is is shaped by what the community wants rather than what we think they should have, if mm -hmm. that makes sense. Very exciting. Yeah, it's going to be very, very cool. cool. Uh, can we talk about goblins? Before yeah, we... go ahead. Ooh. <laughs> what, what have you got to say well, about goblins? Just, just because, um, just literally um, uh, before we uh, came to sit down, I got a little message through from Forge World. Um, I like goblins. I like night goblins in particular. I got and, that one uh, yesterday. Yeah, uh, yeah you're running late. Yeah, <laughs> I obviously don't check my phone. I, I forgot to mention this. Uh, <laughs> so there you go. Uh, well, I'll hold that to here, but I'm sure 
yeah, through, yeah. through sorcery. So, can now so, very nice. so as, as you guys can see, you've got your, your Night Goblin yeah. Battle Standard Bearer, you've got your Night Goblin Boss, and then I love that Shaman, Shaman where he's basically, he's all his magic's boiling out of his face and uh, oh, backside. I love that. And can you see the smoke's forming a little bad moon at the yeah. top? Yeah. It. Genius. It's, I mean, oh, hats cool. off to the Forge World sculptors or the uh, Warhammer Forge guys. Really, really lovely. Oh, um, I love it. I love that. It's armored it's squig. I know. Yeah. It's the Why character would you not? in those. Yeah. Well, yeah, absolutely. But then who puts the armor on the squig? That's, that's a challenge right there. It, it's a different person, different goblin each time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would wager the first one's named breakfast, the second one's yeah. named lunch. It's a high attrition rate they're job. Lucky, they don't get to dinner. In, uh, mm. in Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay, I'd imagine that squig armor isn't a veteran career path. No, 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 no. yeah. It doesn't have any exit <laughs> options. You just, yeah. No, it's, it's, it's really, really great. Um, and... Uh, this Blackfire Pass book they're bringing out. I thought the Throne of Tamarkane, the uh, yeah. the uh, Throne of Chaos book they did was lovely, um, and I thought the um, the beasts um, the beast supplement they brought out was was brilliant. Monstrous Arcana. And now they're tackling a really iconic thing in yeah. Warhammer history. This is going to be so exciting. Yeah. James yeah. and I are Warhammer fans oh, of old, and uh, um, yeah. With, there was a little bit of trouser rubbing, there, I think, yeah, at one yeah. point. It was, it, was, it was very, very exciting. <laughs> Some friction so, occurred. It was, yeah, it's going to be a, a really exciting time. Yeah, very, very cool. But anyway, I thought I couldn't let this slide for the morning without, uh, without talking about goblins, because oh. it's always a good way to end my, uh, end my feedback. Well, guys, there you have it. That closes another Weekender. We hope you enjoy the rest of your Saturday. Um, stay tuned. We'll, we'll be back next week with um just loads more so uh i'm looking forward to it and looking forward to seeing you guys so thanks for watching